Item number 10. Item 10, approval of the El Paso County 2022-2023 Strategic Plan, Brett Waters, County Administrator, Jeff Eckhart, Executive Director, Digital Strategy and Technology Department. Good morning, Good Commissioners. Morning. As Kenny said, Jeff Eckhart, Executive Director of DST. Wanted to come back and since our informal discussions of the strategic plan in May, give you a few updates of what's happened in the interim starting with a presentation to the non-board elected officials that included the sheriff, the DA, and the clerk back in July. We had a presentation to the Citizens Outreach Group yesterday for their comment and feedback. And today we're here to request your formal adoption. Before we go through the plan one last time, I wanted to take just a moment to recognize, first of all, Brett Waters and his unwavering sponsorship. Um, we were had just started off this plan when he came on board and he jumped in with, with both feet and has been a great supporter. So thank you, Brett, for that. Behind me today is the uh, strategy planning team. And these folks have met all through the winter and spring and summer and um, cleared their calendars. They're all, most of them are executive uh, directors also. So I just wanted to call out Crystal Latier from Economic Development, Pete Carey from Justice Services, Stacy Quiddick from Human Services, my deputy, Joe Palmer, Nikki Simmons, our CFO. Of course, Kenny Hodges was on that team before transitioning off to the county attorney's office. And then Jim Shields, um, who was our uh, consultant and facilitator. Um, I just wanted to also uh, give a special call out to Joe Palmer for his um, pro uh, leadership in providing a framework for us. And then of course, uh, Jim Shields and all the outside expertise that he gave us. So like we did in the informal meeting, Brett and I are gonna tag team this. Brett is our sponsor, so it's important that you hear from him and let you know how he feels about the plan. So Brett, let's get started. At uh, the strategic plan uh, up on the screen, let's go ahead and reconvene. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, Brett Waters, County Administrator. It's Real honor to visit with you about our strategic planning process. We visited with you previously, and it's really a team effort. Uh, as, as we've discussed previously, our strategic plan really is the primary filter for how we're gonna make decisions as in the years to come. One of the things that we've all struggled with, at least I have in, in years past with other organizations, is strategic plans often remain somewhat stale. Once you do it for a year or two, they may end up on the shelf and they're not, they lack flexibility. And so we've built in a flexible framework, and so we'll continue to, to, to adapt. Uh, things are going to change, uh, and so we wanna make sure we adapt to those changes. Big part of a strategic planning is accountability. And so we'll have a public facing dashboard with performance indicators to keep us on track and to make sure there's accountability and that we're making progress. We've, as uh, Jeff talked about, we've talked to the countywide elected officials who are excited to engage with this on the strategic planning process. Clearly some of the bigger organizations already have strategic plans, but there are some clear intersections between our plans that we can work with. And then we'll connect to our annual budget and our performance plans. Wait, can you uh, slide that page up? Thank you. Uh, so this is the framework that we'll be using on an annual basis. And, and what I wanna emphasize here, as I did before, is this is a flexible framework. We're gonna be doing uh, planning in one year intervals so that we can account for and adjust to rapid changes in our environment. Things like the Waldo Canyon fire, things like floods, things like pandemics, where if you've got a binder and a plan that sits on a shelf and it's got a, sh a four year shelf life, you just don't have the ability to pivot the organization for those. So we start with a, a set of three to five year fundamentals that includes our principles, our vision, our purpose, and our values. That work is all done. We'll be sharing that with you momentarily. From that um, step, we move into annual objectives. These are the three to five vital things that we must do every year and do them well. If everything is important, nothing is important. So what are the things that we must laser focus on and um, make sure that we're accomplishing? And if the annual objective is a destination that we want to get to, our key results tell us the progress that we're making. Are we making progress towards that? Are we coming up short? Do we need to make changes? And so 
key results are very important in helping us track the progress of our overall objective. From that, we move into the action planning um, step. These are the specific projects and initiatives that'll help us accomplish the annual objectives. That's when we start to um, push the plan out and involve more folks from um, outside of just the strategy planning team, but also departments and offices of, of, of elected officials. From there, we move into the mo a monthly monitoring stage where Brett will be chairing a monthly monitoring meeting. If he's gonna be a great sponsor, then he needs to know that things are happening and that we can report out to him on what that progress looks like. And finally, we can see um, we'll have a few departments in the first year where they too will adopt the same framework and develop department level strategic plans that help um, support the overall countywide plan. Some of the core principles we've discussed are number one, we're a low tax uh, uh, county. Uh, our community has clearly stated they prefer low taxes, low costs. But with that said, we also want to provide quality public services, and we think we can do both. Is that we essentially uh, have a community that values transparency, and we want to continue that, that tradition with uh, publishing data and analytics. We talked about the dashboard that looks at our overall county, the progress we're making, the condition of our infrastructure, while delivering quality public services, while uh, continuing to have uh, low taxes in our community. Our vision statement as we propose it is El Paso County will be a trusted regional leader known for excellence in county service delivery. We feel good about that. Uh, we've talked a number of times on different visions. We feel, and we've talked to you as a board about this vision, we feel good about moving forward with that vision. Purpose is we provide essential public services to our Pikes Peak, to the Pikes Peak region in support of residents, businesses, and communities, enhancing the freedom for all to thrive. We wanna make sure government is assisting residents uh, in their opportunities in El Paso County with the emphasis on its essential public services uh, is, is what we provide. Core values. Uh, we've, uh, you've seen some of these values before. I, I assume some of these were in our previous strategic plan. Uh, and you've been with organizations that have a number of them. But one of the key points from my perspective is number one is that we are here to serve the public. Uh, we are funded uh, through uh, tax taxes uh, in El Paso County, and we are here to serve the residents of, of El Paso County. That is a core value that we have uh, in our organization uh, and in the county. We want to be accountable to the community needs. Uh, we want to be collaborative. We understand that uh, we can't do everything alone, that we have to work with regional partners to accomplish the goals that we have. Uh, we clearly want to be trustworthy. We want the community to trust us, to re for residents to trust us, and we want to build that trust and enhance it. And as we've talked about, we want to be transparent. We want to be open and honest and respectful uh, in our work and in our communication. So objectives, again, are it's a simple description of a dedicated goal. An objective sets a clear path to be undertaken while also providing motivation to get there. The target can be likened to a destination on a map. So our annual objectives this year will have four, and you'll hear, we'll go through each of those today. Um, but they were developed by this planning team that I spoke of earlier. Um, each of those uh, objectives has a sponsor who directs um, and provides oversight for that. And so for three of the four objectives, you're gonna hear from that sponsor today and they'll explain why that objective is important to us. Um, we'll follow that up with detailed objective action planning, um, action plans, and that'll include uh, members from other offices and departments. Um, we intend for this plan to have a direct and clear linkage to our investments, meaning it's tied to our budgets. It's important for us to do strategically. It's important for us to fund. And um, in a similar way, our, our technology investments need to be wrapped around what it is we're trying to accomplish strategically. And finally, every employee in the organization needs to have some kind of link to the strategy. What is my portion or how do I contribute to that? And so with that, um, we're gonna uh, go to a next slide. I'm sorry, not quite yet with key results. Um, key results are the primary indicator of performance progress. How are we doing? Um, we're going to leverage um, a, a nascent but developing data and analytics practice. We are going to public uh, or publish public dashboards to track how we're doing. 
And that could be great stories and that could be not so great stories. Um, so we'll show the organization's successes and struggles. And um, if we're struggling, we'll bring forward ideas on ways that we can close gaps. So key results compel ongoing attention to meeting these tangible targets. Talk to this one. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Uh, Kenny, you want to talk to this one? No, I'm just joking. Kenny was the uh, was a sponsor on this before uh, the board stole him to be the county attorney. Uh, but he was a sponsor. We'll, we will um, find another sponsor. It's uh, big shoes to fill, but we'll do that in the near future. This is a big one. Uh, our first objective is infrastructure. And really, it's an assessment across our infrastructure, including roads, stormwater facilities, fleet, park assets, and then implementing strategies on how we sustainably fund them, um, that we manage them. And essentially, there's a laser focus on this objective, that we're focused on infrastructure, but we need to have a complete and comprehensive inventory of our infrastructure and really a condition assessment across the board. We don't want, uh, say, roads assessing differently than stormwater. We want a, a organization-wide, county-wide assessment of how we manage and how we inventory and how we assess our infrastructure. A life cycle management strategy is what we want in those five major asset classes. And then again, publishing a public facing asset scorecard that is comprehensive uh, throughout the county. Uh, Commissioner Bremer, I believe has a question. Um, just a comment, actually, you know, this is, um, I know that sections of our county government have been able to do this um, and it is way more difficult than it may seem to be. Um, but I think that um, what strikes me as you as you put put these five categories out here like this is um, is the overlap that this inevitably will have with other objectives um, of of transparency and fiscal responsibility, um, actually overall strategy vision, um, because once we can get this done, the comprehensive inventory, and really know what we have where, we're much more able to show the public what we're doing with, with their money um, and with their tax dollars. And we're also probably able to make those go further by being able to quickly apply for grants as they come up. We all know how quickly those federal and state opportunities for grant funding may come up. And um, if we can be ready to go on a dime, this this is something that tangibly helps us be ready to do that at any given point. So I'm pretty excited about it all being organized like that. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, yes, please, if you have a comment. No, I would simply add to that. Yeah, we want to make sure we're organized, prepared, we're shovel ready with project for federal and state grants. We understand that uh, these dollars are precious and, and we have limited resources. So we want to be prepared for those. So thank you for those comments. Great. And uh, just a quick comment uh, from me as well. I mean, uh, you've mentioned it already. I'm looking forward to getting into public domain, uh, the different objectives. You're starting here with infrastructure and we'll see more. Um, but I also like kind of uh, this connection of a dashboard, you know, these indicators and measures, because uh, in my experience, my professional experience, if you're not measuring something, you tend not to act on it. The measures are really helpful to provide insights that allow uh, the senior staff to recognize something and then act on that going forward. So having kind of that embedded into this, uh, and we were doing some of it before, but I think this is a lot more focused and a lot more um, uh, des uh, designed to focus on the things that we can change and that we can move. So I really like having this dashboard and these indicators. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of that going down the road. And I think you've got uh, more to follow, more objectives. So please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Okay, we'll turn it over. Stacy, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioner Stacy Quiddick, Department of Human Services. I'm so pleased to be the sponsor for our second objective, which is improve the quality of county services with a qualified and engaged workforce dedicated to continuous improvement. So there are three primary areas of focus in this objective. Um, develop resident satisfaction metrics, and basically that's to develop a system to gain timely feedback about our public service delivery. We want to look at employee attrition rates and implement strategies to improve employee retention, which we've already really been focusing on throughout the county. 
implement action plans to address the issues that were arisen during the employee engagement survey. So we know as public service, public servants were driven to provide top quality services to our residents. And we know that the only way to do that is through our amazing staff. And we need to continue to invest in them through training, compensation, and other strategies to improve their employment experience, basically making them, helping them recognize how valued they are. Um, improving the quality of public service is directly co correlated to the investments made in the workforce. Basically, satisfied employees result in satisfied residents. Do you have any questions on that one? Great. I, I, do, I have a comment to that, but I'll reserve that in case other commissioners have a comment. Okay. Um, thank you. I, just, I think this is um, a, a great objective as well. And, you know, um, in the two years of COVID that we had, it, it has been tough on employees. It's been really tough. And so that translates to uh, employee retention, you know. So I, I like the fact that we'll, on this objective, we're going to have a, a focus on that. Uh, I know that we've gotten more intensive already uh, with regard to employee surveys, getting an understanding about what they uh, like about the county, working in the county, and, and what some of the challenges are in working with the county. And I think that, again, is going to be right uh, an indicator and a measure that will allow us to make better decisions going forward uh, to hold on to the most valuable asset we have, which is the team. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Crystal Latier, Executive Director of Economic Development here at El Paso County. Uh, I'm honored to be the sponsor of Objective 3 that is focused on community trust. This one is really uh, focused on community trust by increasing community trust through improved communications and transparencies. Some topics that we've already discussed earlier in the presentation today. Uh, those three key objectives that will be related, or those three key results related to this objective will be First, implement external and internal communication strategies um, through and by December 2023. So as you all know, this is something that we already do here in El Paso County. Um, as we've heard from previous um, presenters today, this opportunity will allow us to ensure that those communication strategies, both internal and external, are more comprehensive and aligned, and really um, aligned not only with El Paso County County Administration, but those elected offices. The action planning team um, that will be working on these key objectives will have representation from other public information offices from elected offices here in the county. So that will really just uh, ensure that we have that aligned communication strategy, both internally and externally. You all are likely aware of many efforts already underway here at the county, including new uh, weekly communications internally um, that we've heard has been, uh, have great success, um, we've heard um, as we've moved through that initiative. Second is really to develop a data and analytics practice to inform decisions and publicly track progress towards the performance measures of each of these strategic objectives that you're hearing about today. So uh, County Administrator Waters has shared that and you all have commented on that as well. Uh, but this will ensure that there is a dashboard related to each of the four objectives that we're presenting on today and then any objectives in the future. And then lastly, evaluate resident satisfaction with their county experience and develop strategies to continuously improve metrics. So as we all know, um, we are all dedicated to uh, quality public service. We are public servants um, to our community. And it is important that we have that great communication and feedback loop, feedback loop so we can continuous to, uh, continue to improve. Great, um, any comments on this section? And Thank I'll you. just, uh, I'll just, oh, I've got something okay. to say, sorry. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I'm really glad uh, that this is um, one of the objectives because, uh, you know, what I, in my experience as a commissioner, I have seen uh, an enormous, enormous amount of great work done by the employees on behalf of the citizens of El Paso County. And because that work is done well, it often means there's no controversy connected to it uh, because we're solving problems and getting that those issues addressed. 
But because there's no controversy, it often doesn't get expressed in the public domain about what the county is doing. So here we are achieving a bunch of things, delivering great services, providing for the citizens, doing that in a frugal way with the taxpayer dollars. And there is a large part of the community that doesn't even know that we're doing you know, those kinds of things. So I think this outreach uh, to the public uh, is a great uh, project for us to do. There's two great things about it. One is for the uh, community to know more about what the county is doing, but I think it's also an opportunity for the community to increase their feedback to us mm -hmm. so that we can uh, bend and flex based on what, those, what interests we find. So I think this is uh, uh, really important and I think it's something that we can really um, uh, do a lot better on and achieve. Um, but it's hard, you know, because mm -hmm. when you solve problems and there's no controversy, it, it doesn't seem to rise to kind of community knowledge about it. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, my name is Pete Carey, uh, Director of Justice Services. Uh, for the fourth objective, which I will be the sponsor for, um, it deals with health and safety. Develop partnerships to support community efforts to improve the health and safety of residents. I know that's kind of a general comment, but um, the focus of this will be on uh, coordination and strengthening partnerships in the county. Um, and uh, by my calculations, uh, looking at kind of uh, what's ahead, um, I think this effort will include economic development, DHS, public health, district attorney's office, the sheriff's office, the courts, uh, justice services, my group, and uh, all of our partners, um, both public and private. So um, I'm hopeful about this. It sounds like um, uh, it's gonna be a very, very interesting uh, um, project to work on. There's already great work uh, being done as it relates to health and safety in El Paso County. Um, I think that the uh, county can play a bigger role in coordinating those efforts and uh, being an active participant. Um, I'm reminded of some of the uh, groups that are already working in areas um, uh, like this, uh, the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, which uh, Commissioner Geithner is a part of, uh, the Region 16 Opioid uh, Council, uh, which uh, Mr. Hodges started, and um, we're going to have our second meeting coming up in September. That um, I guess I inherited from him, right? Yes, sir. And um, also, the District Attorney's Office has um, a really uh, highly functioning opioid group. Um, so uh, they're the, uh, some of the ones who are already working. So we're going to identify and develop strategies and evidence-based practices that affect the health and safety of our community. Uh, we're going to develop a way to uh, share this information through public dashboards and through uh, information uh, uh, campaigns. So I'm very, very excited to do that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any uh, comments or questions on this? And uh, I'll just make a, also a quick comment on this. I, uh, we've got some uh, golden nuggets, I think, of great performance in this arena. But um, I think kind of treating this as an overall objective is a great strategic uh, concept. Uh, because I think there's more we can do. And, you know, we've worked a lot on um, like teen suicide and we're certainly um, approving an enormous number, record numbers of uh, 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 single family homes and multifamily um, uh, uh, developments and things like that. But I think thinking of this kind of strategically as a package will be really interesting. I think we'll find some really interesting things as a result of doing that. So I think it's great to have this as objective for. Yeah, I think uh, coordinating these efforts and just uh, so everybody knows exactly what's happening and, uh, and what the state of affairs is as far as that public dashboard, I think we'll move it down the line further. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This is Commissioner Williams. <laughs> Please go ahead. I, this one is a really good one. So I um, I was just thinking as I, we've gone through this, um, that I appreciate this one being in there because we've spent two years where it seems like our primary public health focus has been on COVID. And during this time, you know, we have a lot of things going on out in our community that are very, the fentanyl crisis is, um, is very harmful to our community and it's harmful throughout, throughout the United States. And so we have a lot of other things now that um, we have been, or that COVID has become a permanent part of our lives. I think that we need to turn and fo turn our focus on including the op opioid crisis and fentanyl and, um, and public safety. These are the kind of issues I think that we're going to face as our county continues to grow. So thank you for this. Thank you. 
Yeah. Well, commissioners, we very much appreciate your support. We're excited and uh, to move forward with our strategic plan. I think uh, we've got a great team behind me uh, to move this forward with your with your support and vision. Uh, but uh, we appreciate your approval or any other comments or questions you may have, but we appreciate your support. Great. Uh, uh, Commissioner Bremer, uh, did you have uh, some comments or questions? Um, sure. Can I actually, can I have the team of sponsors behind you stand up? Because I can't see them from this from the spot, sorry. Um, you don't have to come forward. It's be comfortable where you are. Um, I just wanted to say, I think this is, this is so well done. Um, so kudos to the entire team who helped facilitate it, who put this together, who put the organizational framework and backbone behind it. Um, I think, I, I think it's pretty brilliant. First of all, that you have perfectly chosen the sponsors of each of these objectives because first of all i know they're going to get done um, to the letter of what we've just seen on the screen um, and that's uh that's incredibly confirming but you know crystal you embody creating community trust and i've watched you do it over and over and over again um, and stacy same thing can be said for you for um, customer service and engagement um, both within um, your employee population and with your external clients it's quite impressive and pete you are mr health and safety so um i am um I'm excited to see that, um, you know, I mean, this, this is the beginning of it. And you, um, you three in particular are, um, are leading a charge and Kenny on public infrastructure previously as well. Um, but I think, you know, you, if we're going to talk about a strategic plan, it's wonderful to have, um, to have words and goals on a on a paper and and it looks it looks wonderful it sounds wonderful it sounds exciting and to see the right people in the right places with the right actual bullet points under all of those objectives i know that this is going to get done and it's going to ultimately better serve our citizens i'm so excited about that um, and just kudos to the team we have a lot of work ahead of us um, and i think we have all the right people in all the right places um, to actually see this get done and i think our citizens are going to see um, you know see a redefining of who the county is and how we do work very very quickly quick quicker than any of us uh, could have ever hoped for because of who we have in place so thank you very much great thank you for those comments other comments uh this is commissioner williams uh, go ahead I commissioner. Couldn't, yeah i couldn't have said it better than commissioner bremer um a wonderful team in place to do this wonderful objectives and um and just knowing that you know, as we include everyone in the county in the process and we're trying to be better as a county, this is, a, I think, a very flexible plan, um, very much a ability to react to current situations and um, trends if we do have emergencies. And but it also I, I appreciate the transparency and the dashboard. And so the public will know where, where we're doing and what we're working on. Um, so that we can be accountable to our taxpayers and our voters as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. And to Commissioner Williams' point, um, you know, we've had strategic plans for the county in the past, uh, and uh, we've had goals and objectives and those things. Uh, and, you know, the staff and the team has, has worked on, um, you know, uh, achieving those things. But this plan has another component that I think is really, really important. And that is um, your work to connect it to budgets and to do it in an annual uh, way instead of, say, in a five-year or four-year kind of process because stuff happens. I mean, you know, in, in January of 2020, nobody knew that we would have a gigantic pandemic in February of 2020, right? Um, we can have economic upturns and downturns that can uh, really cause uh, challenges for us because of uh, loss of revenue, because of an economic downturn. And that, that 
that forces us to work really hard on um, flexibility, both within budgets and where we pivot to service, uh, providing service to citizens because things happen and they can sometimes happen very quickly. And my, my gosh, have we seen that here in the last few years. So um, this is another part about this plan that I think is very interesting, is hooking it to the budgets and kind of reassessing uh, so that we can move those dollars where we need to based on things that happen that might be outside of our control, but we can do something about them as a result. So I like the fact that the strategic plan connects to that. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I move approval of this oh. item? Please, I think it is time for a motion. Please proceed. Um, I would like to move approval of item number 10, uh, the El Paso County 2022-2023 strategic plan. Second. Uh, yeah. All right, that's been moved and seconded. One last opportunity from the commissioners if there's any comments or questions. Uh, yes, please May I just ahead. make a note, I was remiss. Jeff Eckhart has been really the driver uh, in this uh, strategic plan, him and, and Joe, but particularly Jeff has a great mind for strategic planning. Uh, that's why I was put in his shop even before I got here. But uh, thanks, Jeff. I think he's been a great, great asset. So thank you. Yeah, I think in uh, military parlance, that would make you the strat plan director, right? Something uh -huh. like that. So, <laughs> okay, great. All right, thank you so much. Uh, and we have a motion and a second, and I don't think we've got any other comments or questions. So let's proceed with the vote. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Bremer. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That passes 4-0 with Commissioner Geithner excused. Thank you very much for the really hard work that you guys have put into this. I'm looking forward to it uh, helping us produce a lot of success going forward. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much.